welcome to my channel and today I'm going to be going through my thoughts and feelings of God's Grave by Jay Kristoff. Now if you don't know, this was one of my most anticipated reads of the year. I read Nevernight last year and fell in love with it. So at God's Grave, I was just so excited. I pre-ordered it, went to collect it at Waterstones on publication day. I read it and now I'm here to tell you what I thought. Like I just mentioned, God's Grave is the sequel to Nevernight and this story kind of chronicles Mia, our main character's journey, to avenge her family as they were killed when she was younger due to creating a rebellion. God's Grave picks up a few months after the events of Nevernight and Mia has now decided to sell herself into slavery because this will get her closer to Scavia. I can never pronounce that name but that's how I pronounce it in my head. As every few years there's this kind of grand games and Scavia is there and she believes this will be the closest way to get to him so she can kill him. But to do this she has to sell herself into slavery, she has to become a gladiator and that means having to bend the knee to a slave master, having to go through loads of fighting, go through about three different kind of fights with other gladiators to get to the top. She has to basically prove herself because people just see a small young girl so to become the chosen champion she literally has to prove herself against these big strong men and women who are older, who are wiser, who have been gladiators for a lot longer. So like Nevernight, God's Grave is very violent, it is very bloody, especially because we now have the gladiators and when it gets into the battles it does get very let's just say descriptive when it comes to wounds, when it comes to the battles. There's a bit where someone gets at it on it and it's got maggots everywhere. It does kind of cringe you out a bit. There's also quite a lot of sex in this. There's male and female and there's also female and female, which I know from some reviews people are not happy about, but I don't care. Me as bisexual, I am happy. If you're not happy with the female on female stuff, you need to just go get a life really. Also in God's Grave, we are introduced to another Darkin. I'm not going to tell you who because this is going to be spoiler free. I'm not going to tell you who it is, but you do notice early on. But he is totally different to the other two Darkin we've met in this book. He is very religious, he follows the sun gods. I'm not quite sure whether he knows he's a Darkin or whether that he just kind of suppresses that power, he doesn't know what happens but it creates a lot of questions. We haven't really found out much about the Darkin, about what happens, why Mia has this power, but it creates so many questions that you just hope Jay Kristoff will answer soon because I want to know more about the Darkin because it seems like it's going to be quite interesting and there's also this sort of shadowy monster that saves Mia and she's like, who are you? Are you part of the Darkin? Why did you save me and why did you give me this riddle about my future about what I have to do, which in the end turns out to be someone you did not expect at all, which I think it's the same person, I don't think it's two different people, I think it's the same person. Also along with Darkin, we've got Mr Kinley, Mia's shadow cat, but she has also taken on Eclipse, who is basically a shadow wolf. And as you can guess, cats and dogs don't get along together, so it does create some quite good scenes with the shadow animals lots of sarcasm, lots of humour and I think yeah that is needed for this book because it is quite dark. The fact that you've got Eclipse and Mr Kindler just having a go at each other, having little jibes, I just think is quite funny. As for characters, we obviously have a lot of new characters, you know, the gladiators, uh, her mistress, lots of lots of new people who I fell in love with, I love them so much, I hope we get to see what happens to them after the ending because I didn't like how their bit was kind of just like hung open, I hope they do come back to help. But also there are quite a few returning characters, Mercury, I think that's how you pronounce his name, is back, he is a bishop of God's grave and you've got Ashlyn who's back. As everyone knows, Ashlyn is the person who betrayed the Red Church and she does, she's not very nice but she's back in this and there's also someone else who's back and I don't want to mention who it is. And to end this short video I just have to mention the ending. Oh my god, I can't say anything about it. I just want to talk to someone about the ending because I just have so many feelings, I need to know about what happens in the next book. We're introduced to another Darkin, 
someone who I did not expect, who I think we all thought was dead, and yeah, yeah, I need the next book now, and I can't wait a year, I just need it, need it now. So yeah, that was a really basic, I don't like to call them reviews, it's more like my thoughts and feelings, because I am really bad at reviews, but yeah, overall it was a brilliant book, I think I may have given it 4 out of 5 stars, or I might have just given it 5, I actually can't remember. But yeah, amazing, well worth the wait, and I really, really, really need the next book now. But have you read God's Grave? I just want to know what you think, especially about the ending. I need to speak to someone about the ending, because I did not expect it at all. I just want to know what happens in the next book. I have no idea how many books they are going to be, but I just need it now, because I want to know what happens. So anyway, I am going to stop now before I start rambling. I will see you later with a new video. Bye.